Hi, I'm Sanma Benawan. Today we're going to look at the solution of the pre-release material, the parking paper 2-2 for October 2022. Let's start by reading the pre-release material. An organization has a visitor park with 20 car parking spaces numbered 1 to 20. Car park spaces can be booked by visitors up to two weeks before the date they are needed, as long as a space is available. Visitors request a car parking space by stating the day in the two-week period in which it is required. They give the license number of the car to be parked and their name. The next available space beginning at space one is allocated and the given data and booking are stored. A system is required to record the car park bookings. As usual, you need to test your program. You should have appropriate prompts for data entry, output messages of errors, and variables, constants, and identifiers must have meaningful names. Let's start by looking at task one and task two. So task one is setting up the booking system, set up suitable data structures to store the car license numbers and names of visitors who have booked car parking spaces. The data structures should have sufficient capacity to store data for each of the 20 parking spaces for a static period of two weeks. Allow a visitor to request a parking space on any day within the two week period by entering a number between one and 14 inclusive. The system will check that there are spaces available on the day requested and if so, will ask the visitor to enter their name and car license number. Their data will be stored in the data structures representing the first available parking space for the day requested. The visitor will be told the number of their parking space. At the end of the two week period, allow all of the data to be deleted for the next two week period. Task two, adding accessible parking spaces. The visitor car park booking system is to be redesigned to offer accessible parking. Spaces one to five are named accessible spaces. Spaces six to 20 are named general spaces. Extend your program in task one so that when a visitor requests a parking space, they are additionally asked if they need accessible space. If so, they are allocated the first available space beginning at space one and finishing at space 20. If not, they are allocated the first available space beginning at space 20 and finishing at space six. Okay, I didn't read that tiny detail. I thought it was from 6 to 20. So I'm going to have to um, like redo this video after a while, but at least you'll have almost the entire main idea of task 1, task 2, and task 3. But I will fix this tiny thing starting at space 20 to space 6. The system must work so that visitors requiring accessible parking may be allocated any of the 20 spaces, but visitors who do not need accessible parking may only be allocated general spaces starting from 20 to space 6. So let's look at the first 28 lines of code. Basically, it's setting up the data structures. So as you can see, we have day one equals zero times 20. That will set up a one dimensional array. The data type of the array is integer and it will have 20 zeros. Zero will be used to indicate that that parking spot is empty. If, if somebody requests the parking spot, it will turn into a one to make sure that that has been reserved. Now, as you can see in the bottom 14 lines of code, we have name one equals empty string, 20 spaces of empty string. So these are the arrays where we're going to store the name and license plate number. And as you can see, the data type of these name arrays is string. Let's have a look at a, like a system that has some data in it, some parking spaces. So as you can see on day five, there's a general spot that has been reserved. On day seven, the first five accessible parking have been reserved. On day 12, one of the parking spots have been reserved. And correspondingly at the bottom, we have the name and license plate number of the person who reserved that parking spot. All right, so once again, these are the first 28 lines of code, they are simply just to have 14 arrays to reserve the parking spot and 14 arrays to reserve the names of the people that are going to take that parking spot. Please notice that all these 14 lines are completely left aligned in the file. They are, you know, at the yellow line that you see now, because of course, task two is going to be inside a while loop, so it's not going to be left aligned. So just clearly, you can see that these lines are completely left aligned at the yellow line. And you could also choose to make your day one, day two, until day 14 of type false if you wanted. If they wanted to be Boolean, they could be, you know, each of them is equal to false. I just chose zero because it's just shorter to type. All right, at the top, we have 
part A, okay, which is actually 28 lines of code, day one, day two, until day 14, and name one, name two, until name 14, and those arrays have been initialized. Let's look at the last bit of, you know, the beginning of task one. So the last bit says you can delete the data at the end of the 14 days. So here's the code that you would need. Line 29 would be delete data equals input has two weeks ended. Delete all the data for two weeks, yes or no. Line 30, if delete data equals equals yes, then you're going to have everything go back to the way it was, which is day one equals zero, name one equals empty string, day two equals zero, and name two equals empty string, and all the way till 14. So this is just short for one week. Of course, you're gonna write it for two weeks. Okay, so basically part B is 30 lines of code. Tw line 29 and line 30, delete data and if delete data are completely left aligned. Now notice the next 28 lines of code are in the purple area. They're inside the if, so you should have indented. Okay, just to make that clear that most of part B is indented inside the if statement. Okay, so that was the very beginning of part B you know, task one, which we can see, you know, there was 28 small lines for part A and also like 30 lines for part B. Now let's look at part C. So part C asks the person, okay, the first line, line 59 says, reserve parking equals input, open the system to make a reservation. Line 60, while reserve parking equals equals yes. Accessible equals input, do you need accessible parking? We need that for task two. So that line is part of task two, but as you know, task two is embedded inside task one. So whether they ask you to write task one or task two on your exam, you could just write the same answer, inshallah. Now, that was line 61, where accessible, line 62, day equals int input, which day would you like to park? And we do have a validation check, okay, because they have to type either one to 14, Anything else that's going to say, sorry, only 1 to 14 are available. So that's kind of, I guess, a range check or even a lookup check because you can type either 1 or 2 or 3 up until 14. Okay, so that's a validation to type the day. Let's say they chose day equals 1. Then we're going to have an array called day array. Okay, is equal to day 1 and name array equals to name 1 because we need to manipulate that array and then return it back into the system. Okay, so I think it's clear um, how part C goes, which allows the person to choose a day. And then we are going to take those arrays for that particular day, and we're going to change the parking spot from 0 to 1, and we're going to change the name from the empty string to the name and car license plate of the person. Okay, it's very important to note that the rest of the program is inside the while loop. It's at the purple line. The rest of the program, all the way till the end, is inside the purple line. It's not left aligned. There is an indent. So let's look at now, you know, basically if we're going to look at part D. So up until now, we have initialized part A, we've initialized the arrays. Part B, we ask the person, do you want to delete the data? Part C, we ask them, would you like accessible parking? And we got the day, and then we were able to save, you know, to copy the day and the name array. Okay, now we're going to go ahead in part D and change the zero to a one, okay, for the particular parking spot that they have and change the name from the empty string to their name. So here's how that's gonna go. Line 105, if accessible is equal to yes, we will try to find you accessible parking. And we're going to check parking spot by parking spot. So while day array of count is equal equal to one, that means the first spot is taken if count equals zero or the second spot is taken or the third spot. So move on to the next one. As soon as they find an empty spot, so day array of count is equal to zero, you know, that's at the else, okay? So we're going to say the parking spot number that's available. We're going to change it from a zero to a one. Okay, so that's on line on line 112, it says else, line 113, parking spot equals count plus one, print the parking spot available as parking spot, and change it from a zero to a one, and input the name and license plate number. If you'd like to do a presence check or format check, that should be very easy. Okay, and you can store it back into the original array. Else, 
you can say, all right, you did not choose accessible parking. So we're going to have to say count is actually equal to 20. And then we're going to say count equals count minus one until 20. So that needs to change. OK, there's a little bit mistake of that because I thought it was from six to 20, but it's from 20 to six. But um, you could try the program for now like this and, and try to fix it yourself. Put in the comments if you're able to fix it according to what is needed. All right, so now we've finished allocating a parking spot to the person in part D. We're going to go ahead to part E, which is lines 131 to 173. And so it's basically if the day was one, replace your new array, put it back into the system because day one name one is the actual system. You know, elif day is equal to two. That means you changed in day array and name array and put it back into the system. So this is a really simple I don't know, about um, 40 lines of code or so that we needed for the system to work. All right, so that is the end of task two, but we also just went ahead and did task three inside it. So I'm just going to go ahead and read task three, inshallah. It says, task three, three, working out car park usage statistics extend the program to enable the following statistics to be counted and output on request the number of accessible spaces used on any of the 14 days the number of general spaces used on any of the 14 days the number of accessible spaces used in the whole 14 day period the number of general spaces used in the whole 14 day period and the total number of spaces used in the whole 14 day period so in order to basically print out day by day it just 14 lines will print out exactly what's stored in the array. So all the zeros and ones and the names of the people. So that will take part, you know, care of the beginning of like basically one and two, because it tells you, it takes care of all of the ones, how, like how many accessible on this day, how many general on this day. Now, in order to show it as a total number though, not just show the array, you would have to go ahead and do these lines of code. First of all, you're going to have to create 14 counters, okay, for day 1A counts how many are accessible parking, day 2A counts how many are accessible, while day 1G counts how many are general parking, and day 2G counts how many are general parking. So you'd have to first initialize those variables, okay, you might have a question on the exam, what variable could I use? So day 1a is a variable. It's of type integer and it counts how many total accessible parkings are being used on day one. Okay. And then you can also go ahead in the second column and you can, you know, find the actual sum. So day 1a equals only the first five spots plus day 2a. Okay. Is like total how many spots there are. That's why I had to use zeros and ones to be able to easily total them. So these variables like day 1a gives you how many accessible parkings there are on day one, day 1g gives you how many general parking on day, on day one, and total day one will give you the total number of parking spots that were reserved on day one. Same thing is repeated 14 times for the four days. Finally, um, it says, you know, if they want to see the stats, so we can have variable C stats is equal to input. Would you like to see the stats for these two weeks? If C stats is equal to yes, then we're going to just print out what's inside the variables. So for example, the last line says print day 14A. That will tell you how many people were reserved on 14th, on the 14th day that wanted accessible parking and how many that wanted general parking. And finally, the total for the 14 days. You also need to have one more line of code just before the end, which says the total for all 14 days is equal to total day one plus total day two plus total day three, all the way to total day 14. Okay. Honestly, this entire uh, pre-release material could be done in a much, much, much easier way using two-dimensional arrays. However, I checked the specification and two-dimensional arrays are not part of the IGCSC for computer science. They're part of um, like the AS level, not in, you know, not in the 2020 specification. So I apologize for the long code, but it's mostly just repeated code 14 times. So maybe while you're writing your exam, you can just say, repeat this code 14 times for day two, day three, etc. if you wanted to. All right, let's have a look at how some of the 
you know, let's say we ran this program. So the first thing that comes out is has one week ended? Delete the data for one week. Yes or no? So let's say no, not one week hasn't ended. Open the system to make a reservation. Yes. Do you need accessible parking? Yes. Which day would you like to park? I'd like to park on day one. We'll try to find you accessible parking. The parking available on day one is one. Type your name and license plate number. So I just typed Salma999. You could definitely put a presence check over here so that if they didn't type anything, it would create an error okay if you need help with the code for that just drop me a message in the comments all right so here is what changed now the array you know has changed and here's like you know how we changed the updated day so the updated day array becomes one in the first spot and becomes updated name array becomes salma 999 we took those arrays and now replaced it back into our actual system of the 14 arrays so we've changed that first array and now it became one with all zeros for day one and the first name became Salma 999. All right, so that was the beginning of task one. Task two here is task three. It shows you the statistics for two weeks. It shows you now on day one, we have one accessible parking. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, this was a quick summary beginning. Um, if like I will be holding classes for this next week. If you'd like to, please you know drop me an email. If you'd like to join, I'll give you more details about that. Thank you so much for paying attention. I hope you do great on your exam. Have a good day. Bye bye.